Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today we have a quilting play-by-play -play for you where I show you from a bird's eye view exactly what I see when I am quilting a quilt. So we get to attach the GoPro to the long arm and I take you through my quilting decisions. This was definitely one where I made my decisions mostly on the fly, so I can talk you through exactly through that decision-making process. Normally, I'm the one sewing the top together, so I kind of have an idea as I'm sewing what I'm gonna do with it. This one, one of our team members put it together, and log cabins are tricky because it's very easy for your blocks to get a little smaller than they're supposed to be. So this one, had some depth to it that I had to work with. I was, it was still, it was a great top. Everything fit together really well. It just, you know, I had some volume that I needed to work with. So I was think, I went from thinking I was gonna do some real work to thinking all free motion. So that way we can ease in things and just have that, uh, get as flat as possible with the quilting. So we're gonna talk through that with you guys today. And just so you guys know, we do have kits available for this. It's called Maple Leaf Log Cabin. We have kits available while supplies last, and the pattern is on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. You can grab that anytime. And uh, we do have a piecing video tutorial that we just put out on that. All right, so before we get started, we're gonna talk thread. So normally I am going with bone, which is kind of like a really, really light white. Uh, for this one, I went with linen. This is a 40 weight glide. I use it all the time. My machine really likes it. And it kind of has a sheen to it, which I think you can see. We have a new camera overhead that has a lot more detail. So hopefully you can see that there is a sheen to it here. Now I picked this one because I wanted to use one thread for the entire quilt top. So I knew that this one would blend with the majority of them and sort of just create the texture. And it does that in any one that has a lighter print in it. In some of these darker ones, you definitely can see it, it does stand out. But for the majority of them, they're kind of in the medium uh, range as far as color value goes. So it is really easy to just sort of create the texture, be able to pick one thread and go all over. You could, of course, change it up. Like I could have come up with a dusty purple for all of my leaves. I could have done a different thread for my background than I did for my print uh, log cabin strips. And I, I, I was kind of regretting that I didn't go with like a green, like a celery green for my border because it really does show up quite a bit, especially when we have the spine, which has a lot of thread overlap, which you'll see when we do the quilting. Um, but for quilting this as densely as it did, I was able to do it in one day, and it was because I didn't do a ton of thread changes. If I would have done that, it would have been lots of going back and forth. I would have had to do, like say, the entire background first, and then change threads, and maybe do the entire uh, uh, log cabins, piecing strips, the fat quarter strips, then maybe change threads multiple times to go back and do all of these, and then finally hit the border, and it just would have been a lot. It would have been a lot to keep track of. It's easy to miss stuff when you keep doing that, and I just wanted this one to be done kind of quickly. Uh, I want a lot of my quilts to be done kind of quickly, but still be able to give it that custom look. And so we're gonna take a look at the quilting in the video. I essentially created a couple of different looks here. We're gonna do some swirls in the background. We're gonna have some uh, ferns in the fat quarter, uh, half of the log cabin, as well as in the border. And then I just did some wavy lines here within the leaf. And I will tell you the one thing I regret doing, so I did not do anything in the background here because this is very white. Uh, and I knew that this bone would show up in a bad way on this background. So I left that undone, which I'm kind of regretting because that's the only part that isn't really densely quilted. And since we have a little bit extra volume anyway in this quilt, it's really popping up now. Um, but it, in terms of quilting it enough to keep it together and have it last for a long time, nailed that on the head, we're good. Um, but if I could go over and do a do-over on this one, I would add a little bit of quilting in the backgrounds here because I didn't do anything for that. And you can tell it's a little puffy there, but it turns out, I love how this turned out. I'm just gonna show you the back so you can see the texture. I mean, it's so fun. I mean, we have bugs, so it's harder to see the texture on this one, but it was just really a fun one. This was one where like, you know you're doing a good job when occasionally 
your team members just come over and are just like watching you as you're quilting because they want to see how you're doing the little firm thing. So I know that that's an indication of like, I'm on the right track. All right, so let's watch the play by play. You guys can see it in real time as I'm working on it and I'll explain my quilting decisions for you. All right, so the very first thing I'm doing is I'm creating my spine and there's three strips going down the center here. So I'm going down the middle one and I'm just doing a nice little wavy line there. And now I'm following it up with little wavy kind of elongated S's that are going out and in to create the leaves of my fern. I am not capable of quilting feathers freehand, but I can do this and it creates just as intricate of a look, but it definitely is a lot easier to manage because you don't have to think so much of where I'm going next. You are just doing a little wavy line out and a little wavy line back in. And you're trying to always hit that spine. And when you're done with the leaf, you're gonna come in a little bit and travel on that line. So that way it can kind of look like your leaves are coming to a point along that spine. This is why it's really important to use a thread like Glide. You want something that you can quilt over a couple of times without getting too bulky. And we'll show you a close up, um, a photo close up of what the spine actually looks like. So you can see that really I'm able to go over that quite a bit with the thread without it that build up looking gnarly and gross. Um, so then once I get all the way up to the bottom or the top in this case, I'm now making my way down the other side. So I'm still doing those S shapes, just going out and back to create those leaves. But I am um, going obviously to the other side and we want them going in the same direction. In this case, they're both going down and out. And so on one side, we're going out that way and the other side, which is what we're working on now, it's going out to the back there. Now, I think you can notice there's a little bit of a stay stitching line going around my quilt. I do that so that way everything stays nice and together when I am uh, long arming, but also it gives you a really great guide of where to stop when you're doing special border designs like this. All right, so now we're getting into the background filler. For this, I just did a swirl, but I did it really tight and dense because this was the area of the quilt that had the most volume that needed a little help. So swirls are great for when you have some volume that you need to sort of cinch in because they're very forgiving and you can really cinch everything down. So what I'm doing here, the log cabin strips are about um, one inch finish. So I'm making, essentially I'm using the side of the strip as my guide. So that way I can make a circle that's about an inch and then I can come in. And one thing you're noticing here is I'm coming in and I'm going around and then I'm coming out and doing the same way. And I kind of went up and down and I'm gonna change direction, but on the next row. So you can see I'm coming in to the right there and then going out, in from the right, going out. All right, so now we're going to sort of travel down and now we're going in from the left as I work down my next way. And I find this a little easier when I can go up and down like this because it still looks randomized a little bit, um, but because you're gonna have them going in opposite directions for every different column, but your brain doesn't have to keep constantly thinking, oh, I need to switch directions um, when I'm going around like that. So a lot of times when I'm doing background filler, I'll fill up and down like this and it works really well. If I'm doing an all over design, then that's a whole nother story. But I find that this works a little bit easier for my brain. All right, I'm just gonna let you guys watch as I work my way around the rest of this background for the quilt block. and breaking my thread there because I don't have anything else that I can go into. So there were a lot of stops and starts here, but it's totally okay. All right, so now I'm making another spine. So what I'm doing here is I'm going all the way through over two blocks. So that way I can work to create that spine that I'm gonna work with. All right, so I'm just working on one half of the spine here. I'm doing the same kind of waves that I did for the border, but I have a bigger and more regular shape to fill. So I'm making them a little bit fatter and I'm kind of working out from, I kind of made that spine go about halfway through the block um, for those log cabin strips. And I'm just working my way out. I have wigglier lines to make sort of wigglier leaves. 
and I'm just traveling. You can see I'm coming back a little bit further than where I came in, traveling along that spine, and then coming back out. And it really is creating a fun design. Now here I get to have a little bit more fun and make those a little bit bigger because I have more real estate to work with. So I really can have some fun working with that. And I'm just gonna keep going, making them a little bit longer or shorter as needed, depending on the space I have to fill as I'm working around that log cabin print. And then when everything is said and done, we're gonna work our way back up to the top. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and watch as I work my way around here. The biggest things to remember is you wanna fill your space evenly. So you want your fern leaves to be about the same size. You can make them as wiggly as you want, but do try to be a little bit consistent. It's nature that you're emulating, so if it's not perfect every time, that's no big deal. But you want to always come back to that spine, travel a little bit on it, and then start your next one. So you can see I've actually quilted a little bit on the left here already that was in the row above. So I'm kind of quilting up to where my quilt, previous quilting line was, and that's where I am stopping. So these are really small little ferns here, but that's okay, I'm still filling the space evenly, and I'm trying to keep them about the same width. All right, so now for this one, uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're not gonna have a single center spine. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap as it goes down through there. So you actually kinda can see like the stem that all the leaves are attached to. So I'm just trying to stay about a quarter inch away from the first spine that I created. And then when I come up to the top, I'm just creating that top, that first leaf, and now I'm gonna work my way back down, this time on the other side. Again, we're still trying to keep the leaves going in the same direction, so if they're both going up at this point, we want the other side to be going up to match the other one. You can, once you get like really advanced at this, try to match all your leaves so that the spines are hitting at the same spot. Um, I really don't bother with that at all, and I feel like it still looks absolutely fabulous. When you get to spots like this, I feel like you can really have a lot of fun creating a lot of curvature to those leaves. So you can see I'm really kind of taking some liberties there with that leaf shape because I've got a long way to go and I can really just have some fun filling out into the edges of that fat quarter log cabin, the half of it and just really have some fun with that. That one is super curvy. I was obviously having a good time with that one. And now you're gonna see them start to get a little bit smaller, a little bit more uh, subdued as we go through this section because I just don't have as much real estate to work with. But when you do have those bigger spots, have some fun with it, it looks really cool. I'm working inside the leaves themselves. So this is where I originally wanted to do ruler work, but it was just a little too floofy to be able to do that. So what I'm doing instead is I'm just doing more wavy lines, working my way across that leaf. And I'm essentially just going kind of from point to point to work my way across. So you can see I hit the point in the center. Now I'm gonna go to the point of that leaf. Now we're gonna go to the point of that outer maple leaf, and we're gonna go to the other point. And by working your way across like that and just going back and forth, you're able to create still depth. Like it looks like the veins of the leaves going out like you would find in nature, but I'm able to kind of spread out that poofiness a little bit because like I said, log cabins can be a little bit challenging. If you're off, especially when you're combining, if you're off a little bit in your sizing of your maple leaf blocks, and then if you're off a little bit in the sizing of your log cabins, it just might not be the flattest quilt ever but you can fix a lot with quilting and we definitely did with this one. All right, so you can see I'm just kind of bouncing my way back and forth doing some wavy lines, which is a very beginner stitch. Anybody can do a wavy line with a little bit of practice, but this is just a way to really dress it up. And this quilt, uh, it looks so fancy when it's all said and done. 
like it is we have a ton of texture right here going all around it looks like i've got it coming all the way up i really had some fun when i got to my center one like that's the stem and then the leaves are coming all out from there we've got wavy lines within our leaves we have some really dense quilting in the background here we have a uh leafy fern going all the way around the border there's a lot of custom elements to this quilt but we have a swirl which is a very beginner quilting stitch and then we have variations on wavy lines that's it that is all that we're doing here and when I used to teach beginner quilting in person, we would start with a curve design and then we would start with a pointy design because if you can do curves and you can make a point, then that is the foundation for pretty much anything else that you would do in free motion quilting. So I challenge you to give this a try, um, especially this fern spine. It looks so fancy, but it really is very easy because you are just waving out and waving back in, traveling along the spine, waving out and waving back in. And it really gives a very elevated look. It looks like feathers. It really does, but it is way easier than feathers. And you don't have to think so hard about what direction is my feather supposed to be going now because I've lost count and I'm just not sure. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this quilting play-by-play. -play. I hope it gives you some ideas for your next quilt. And I want you guys to give this a try. I really think that you can do, break it down and do something that looks more challenging, that really gives your quilts a custom look without feeling like you need to be a professional lover quilter, because you don't. You can absolutely do this. This fern design that I did in the border, I did that on the first or second. I think the first quilt I did on a long arm, I did a fern design like that. And I didn't put it in a show. I put it in my local show and I did it for just, just to put it in there. I didn't want it to be judged because I knew what my mistakes were and I didn't want to, I didn't want someone else to tell me what they were. And later I was told that that would have run a blue ribbon in the crib quilt category that I put it in if I would have just had it judged because, and but I felt so bad about how my leaf turned out in my border that I thought, that's not good enough. It just isn't. But I used coordinating thread. And so all you saw was texture mostly and not that it wasn't, it was obviously my very first attempt at it. But that's, that's what you have to do. You have to go for it. You have to try it and you have to be okay if it's not absolutely perfect. And you know what? Nature isn't perfect either. So if you're making a ferny leaf and it's not perfect, God didn't make it perfect either. So you're good. All right, check out Maple Leaf Log Cabin. We have the pattern available for download over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We also have a limited supply of kits using uh, Summer's End from Figo Fabrics. And that is the modern division of Northcott Fabrics. If you are not familiar with them yet, we sell a lot of their fabrics. I really love their designs. Um, but check that out. Uh, you get a large, well, I, I guess an okay size lap. It's perfect for me, a 5'2 woman, to snuggle under. It is that perfect size. Um, but if you want to make it larger, um, if you get four of them, it's enough for a king size quilt. And of course, you can get any combination thereof. And it's a log cabin. You can lay out log cabins any way you want to lay out log cabins to create a fun design because they're very versatile. This one's in a barn racing pattern, which is very fun. All right, that's enough for now. Stay tuned for next time. We'll have more tutorials coming your way. And make sure you're liked and subscribed here on YouTube. We're sending out lots of new videos um, every week and lots of shorts where you can get little snippets of tips and tricks or just get some quilt inspiration. Um, we're going to go film a quilt drop of this one next, so that'll be on a short. And then also make sure you're subscribed over to our email list so that way you don't miss a thing. And also you get 10% off your first purchase if you subscribe over there. And that uh, is good even on brand new stuff like this. So check that out. And until next time, happy quilting. Cool